the set time of God's favor has come. I've been hearing this in my spirit and God just speaking to me how, you know, the set time, the set time has come. He said in his word, he said, the set time of favor has come for me to favor her. See, God was talking about his church. He's talking about his church. See, God sets the time for favor to be released. Hear me well. Glory to God. And he does it according to his purposes for specific reasons. It's, look at somebody that says, not about me. God want to show himself. Mm-hmm. Oh, glory. The body of Christ is being established and positioned at this time. Mm-hmm. By whom? God. By God. And he's putting us in a whole new sphere. That's why everything. He stopped the whole world to do this. And that's why everything you hear everybody talking about, it's a new normal and it's a new this and it's a new that. And, and you know, no, we don't do it like this. And then there, there is just change that God is bringing. He's bringing change in this ministry. He's bringing all. Why? It's his set time. And you have nothing to do with how he orchestrates it. God orchestrates it. And the best thing for you to do is just say, yes, Lord. And move with his timing. Because it's his plan and it's his will in the season that he's getting ready to usher in here. There's something new getting ready to happen for you. It's something grand getting ready to happen. It's something phenomenal getting ready to take place. But you have to be in the position of what the Holy Spirit is doing, that God has orchestrated you there. You won't get there of your own will. You won't get there of your own plan. It will be orchestrated by the plan and the will of God, this new sphere that he is taking the church into. You may be seated. So the enemy is counteracting, listen, listen, with fierce warfare. The devil is a liar. He's counteracting with fierce, did you hear me say fierce? Fierce warfare against the people of God, messing with your money. Messing with your finances and jobs. Messing with your children, your grandchildren. Messing with your jobs. Messing with your promotion, your increase. Man, he, he's on the feet. He's counteracting. That's why things are going. Messing with your health. Messing with your body. Yeah, fiercely he's doing some things that look like, oh, this thing. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Somebody said, thank God for favor. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Because you can easily miss, you can easily miss what God is doing in this hour if you get your eyes up on the attack. If you start talking to your body, oh, this hurts so bad. Oh, I'm just in pain and oh. In the name of Jesus. If you, you let a situation overtake you instead of in the name of Jesus, cover myself with the blood. I'm going in in the name of the Lord and I'm coming out with the victory. Hey, girl. So you got to let the devil know his fierce attack. This is not his set time. Did you hear me? I'm releasing this word. It is God's set time. It is God's set time to do the phenomenal, to do the extraordinary, to do the wonders. It's God's set time. He orchestrated it. Can't nobody, not even you, do anything about it. The best thing you can do is get in position. Oh, y'all can sit down. Hmm. Don't you miss this movement of God. That's breaking you out. See, that's what it's doing. It's breaking you out. See, it's breaking you out. Don't you miss it. Oh, glory to God. 
Don't you let that counterattack of the enemy cause you to become distracted by your own personal warfare. Uh huh. Salah. Hey, it's, I, did you hear me say it's not about me? You better look at somebody and say it ain't about me. I'm trying to tell you it's not about you this morning. This is the plan of God and his set time. Glory to God. And oh, my God, I thank God for favor. Hey, because those that's been getting in his presence, come on here, 40 days. Glory to God. Those that's been stretching out in prayer. Oh, glory to God. Those that will humble themselves. Come, that's what the presence does. The presence makes you humble yourself. And that's why Second Chronicles 7 and 14 said, if my people will humble themselves. Come on here. When you humble yourself, you're going to pray. Will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And I will forgive them of their sin. Let me tell you right now. Oh, glory to God. God has a set time. God has an order in what he does say. And when heaven is calling for for what God wants. And you're in the vision here. Where we've been ushering in. The presence of God. From the 21 day to the 40 day. Where the presence don't just come for you to shout. It don't just come for you to feel, ooh. The presence of God comes for you to humble yourself. The presence of God comes for you to be exposed. The presence of God comes for you to see what's going on. And he said, if you will do it, if you will do it, if you will allow me to expose you, if you will do it, woo, if you will humble yourself and pray. Hey. One thing about the vision here, one thing about this church, that the Lord has given me a vision, and this church is moving with it. Ah, leaders that will obey the instruction of what God wants done. Oh, we're moving with those that will come in. Oh, oh we don't have to have the whole church. We're just covering everybody. That's all. We're just covering everybody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But if... You will humble yourself. Seek my face. Humble yourself. And pray. I got something I want to say. That's what God says. I'm going to speak. You're going to hear. You're going to be clear. You're going to be clear about what I'm going to do. It's God's release on me. Y'all can sit down. It's God's set time. It's his appointed time. Hmm. Hey, hey, show the book of Sha. Enemy is mad. Hmm. There are places that God's getting ready to take you. There are things that God's getting ready for you to do that only God can orchestrate. Hear me well. Only God can put it all together. Only God, who glory to God, can bring you into this place that through that prayer, through that getting in his presence, through that humbling yourself, that God have gotten you in a position that he can ordain you. To do that, that only he can plan and will for you. That's why David said, do whatever you got to do to me. I messed up, but you shake me. You restore me. You renew a right spirit in me. Whatever you got to do, you do it. Because I cannot do this myself. You are the orchestrator. You're the one that's got the plan. You're the one that's got the will. You're the one. Hmm. These are the things 
when God's plan and his will gets ready to go forth, you got to have divine intervention. Y'all better hear me. You got to have divine intervention to counteract the fierce attack of the enemy. But if you will dare, woo, if you will dare, what others don't come out of, you'll come out of. What others are not released from, you'll be released from it. It can't hold you bound. God's taking you someplace. And it's going to require supernatural intervention that you cannot do yourself. Think it not strange. Think it not strange. Ooh, what's happening? Ooh, what's a think it not strange concerning the fiery dots that come to try your very soul? Somebody said, thank God for favor. When God's appointed time comes, God will suddenly open doors. God will suddenly make the phone ring. Oh, y'all better hear me. Phone calls will be received and divine appointments oh, will occur in the spirit realm. That as you pray and get in his presence, you will usher him in. He, Lord have mercy. <sighs> You usher in what God wants to do and what he has planned and what he wills for not only you individually, but for your church. Amen. Amen. Hmm. God's ready to do something great. So he's bringing you to a forefront position. Somebody says, it's not about me. He's bringing you to a forefront position where he needs you to be. Where he wants you, where he needs you to be. Why? Because he got a plan down here and he uses man. Ooh, somebody again says, it's not about me. God will give you a voice of influence to affect, listen, listen, to affect the atmosphere around you. That you'll use that voice and declare what he said. In the midst of the fierce attack, uh, declare the word of God. Oh, my God, my God. Why? Because his set time is here. Hey, you're positioned. I'm ready. I got on my helmet of salvation. I got my shield of faith. I got my sword of the spirit. I got my loins girt about in truth. I got my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I'm making prayer and supplication to the Lord. I'm letting the devil know. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. It's my set time of favor. God said to Jeremiah, he said, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms. That is when he was a young boy. To pluck up and to break down. To destroy and to overthrow. To build and to plant. What's going on? That's God's plan. And that's God's will. While erosion is taking place, he's planning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While he's breaking down, he's building up. Oh! Oh, 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 that's God's plan. If my people will humble themselves and pray. Oh, my God, breaking down. Oh, you're here from heaven. Build you up. <laughs> Woo, somebody tell someone it's not about me. Ah, finances will come in time and on time to get the job done. Oh, you better tell somebody it's not about me. It's to support the work of the Lord. Oh, y'all couldn't hear that part, could you? Ah. See, if you learn how to plant when he said plant, oh, the harvest is coming. Oh, the harvest is coming. I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for you. Glory to God. Don't get upset. 
because God have orchestrated this time for you to be in fierce warfare. Oh, girl, humble yourself and pray. Quit saying, why me? Why did it? Humble yourself. Humble yourself and pray. Seek his faith. Turn from your wicked way. Then you go here. Uh, if you're a dad to do it, if you're a dad to do it, if you're a dad to do it, God will open up the windows of heaven, pour you out blessings that cannot be gotten any other way. You won't have the room to receive it. And I'm not just talking money. God blesses in more ways than money. So what does he want you to do? He said, if you honor me and honor those that I honor. Oh, let me get you the scripture. Let me get you the scripture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, huh, when you will keep God in his first place, when you honor God with your life and honor what he honors, the doors of favor will begin to swing wide open for you. Why you think he wants you disrespecting family members? But the Bible said, come on. It says that daughters would be against mothers. And sons against fathers. And it also said daughter-in-laws against mother-in-laws. And it said it in the Bible there. Why are you getting so upset? Because that's the fierce attack you under. Humble yourself and pray. Don't you start trying to fight with your plan. Don't you start. To, now humble yourself and pray. Thank God for the exposure. Thank God for making it known. Thank God for letting you see it. Thank God for opening it up. Thank God for letting your eyes behold and see what God is doing. Humble yourself and pray. Seek God's face. Get in his presence. God going to show you something. He going to show you his will. And not only that, this is where I'm going. I'm going to close this eye. Ooh, when you do that, this new spear, you'll find that you have stepped into a new day. Things that used to bother you don't bother you. Ain't even dealing with it. You're dead to me. <laughs> not even deal with it. Mm-mm, not going to deal with it. What did, I, what, did, what did I tell them prayer leaders? You let the spirit of death know. Mm-mm, I ain't coming your way. And you not coming mine. Uh-huh. Girl, I shut the door on all of that. So the Lord is letting you know here that we have stepped into a new day. When you step into the new day, the old doors are shut. Oh, doors are shut. Isaiah 22 and 22 is the key of favor being offered unto us this year. It's the key promise to David, to Jesus, and to the followers of Jesus. It is a key of favor that opens doors into kingdom realms and possibilities that only God can open. Oh, my God. David was very precious to God. And he was a man God delighted in because of his obedience and his humility. He did some things, but God delighted in him. He said, because he's a man after mine own heart. I love his humility. God can't do nothing with a stubborn heart. God can't do nothing with a heart of pride and a selfish spirit. But he said, if you will humble yourself before the fall, if you will humble yourself, oh my God, before destruction, I will turn everything around. So he said here in Isaiah, 22 and 22, the key of favor being offered to us this year. Hear me well. It's the key he promised to David, to Jesus, to the fathers of Jesus. The key of favor that opened doors into kingdom realms and possibilities that only God can open. (sighs) What did God do with David? God defended him. What did God do with David? God protected David's destiny. Hi. To rule as king. That's why you need to get your promise. 
That's why you need to know what God say about you. Regardless to what the world is trying to label you with. What does God say about you? You won't know unless you get in this Bible and start reading it. Otherwise, you're going to believe what your own mind's saying and what the world is saying. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. But God protected David's destiny because he would humble himself and he would pray and seek God's face. God protected his destiny. He protected his destiny as a father. He protected his destiny as a king. All that God had promised him, God protected the destiny of it. All the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God protected the destiny of it. He said, as long as there's a throne, you're going to have somebody sitting on the throne from the house of David. God protected the destiny of David. God is protecting the destiny in your houses. God is protecting the destiny concerning the promise that God has given unto you and God's going to bring it to pass because it's destiny that's the plan and the will of God. God gave us the keys to the kingdom. Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. As spiritual warriors, many of us have become experts on binding and loosing. Listen, listen. But there's another key that you can use to open doors that no one can shut. And shut doors that no one can open. Tell me, tell me, what is it, what is it, what is it? 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 Where is it at? Hmm. You said come on, so where is it? It's the key of David. You can call it Isaiah 22 and 22 in the Old Testament. But you can also call it what? Where? Where, is it? where? where else in the Bible? Y'all said come on, so tell me where it is. I'm coming. Revelations 3 and 7. It's there. Because the prophetic scripture is mentioned in both of those books. Isaiah 22 and 22 reads, The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. Ah, but listen to this. Listen to this. It says, Then, when he laid that key on the shoulder, then he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. Now, wait a minute. He said he. When he said he, he's not talking about a man. He's talking about Jesus. So you got to have that relationship with Jesus. You can bind and loose all you want. But the he he's talking about there is Jesus. You got to be in relationship with him in order for there to be that power behind what you speak and that he can trust you with that key. So our job as the people of God is to discern God's will and the kingdom purpose. So we can exercise that authority. You just don't do it because you're mad at somebody. You just don't do it. Just throw that word of God. I bind that spirit. Hey, hold up here. Glory to God. You exercising an authority in his name to open what he wants open and to shut what he wants shut. You got to know that word when the devil crossed that line when you tell him, I bind you. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because you know the promise that God has given you. That he said the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. You know the promise that God has given you. That you know that oh he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes I am healed. I know that's what the word says. So I'm not just talking slack. When I tell you pain, you got to go. When I say pain, you must go. And I say in the name of Jesus. Power. He's the one. What he wants open. And what he wants shut. We got to know. When you get to this place. That you position yourself to operate with God. According to his will. Not because you're mad at somebody. Just because you come to church Sunday morning, you know how to throw this around. Huh. When you begin to use it according to God's plan, 
and his will because the Bible says it. The word of God says that all his promises are yea and in him, amen. I got a right to them. Glory to God. And you begin to use that. This is what, see, this is where the enemy is trying to keep you from. It will begin to break down barriers. You can pray in your house and pull down the works of the enemy before you even get there. You can pray and pull it down. Oh, glory to God. And the walls shall come tumbling down. So the key is to discern God's will in that situation. Jesus has not called us to be reckless with the key of David. You know, you're particular about who you give your key to. You don't give everybody a key to your house. You say, wait a minute now. You don't give everybody a key to your house. Then when you give somebody a key and they reckless with it, oh, I don't have my key. I didn't get my key. I didn't, you don't understand the plan for the key. You, you, you haven't really discerned the unit of what's happening here. And so this is the same with God. And it'll just like if you use it in discerning God's will, it'll break down barriers. If you don't use it according to his will, it'll set barriers up. And you'll be wondering what's blocking me. What's stopping me? I'm going to church. I've been to church. Why can't I? Again, the key, the key is discerning the will of God. Jesus has not called us to be reckless with the key of David. Nor will Isaiah 22 and 22, that key, it won't work if you try to turn it in a direction opposite to God's will. Amen. It won't work. That's why he said you can get together. Yeah. Isaiah 8, 9, 10. Speak the word against me. It won't work. You're trying to turn a key that you, uh -uh, you're in the wrong position. Every demonic spirit is running. You can't turn no key against somebody who's in the plan of God and the will of God, submitting themselves, humbling themselves, saying, God, if it's me, show me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And there you think you're going to turn a key on them that is against the will of God. It will not work. It'll just continue to put up barriers. It'll just keep putting barriers up. It'll keep putting barriers up. Keep putting barriers up. Keep putting them up. You trying to pray against Come here. 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 Break a circle around me. It'll just keep putting up barriers. But oh, didn't I tell you while the enemy is tearing down, God is building up. While you're trying to speak against me, God is putting a wall around me and protecting me. Glory to God. And keeping me from all harm. Keeping me from the will of man. Keeping me in the will of God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, I shall condemn whatever I be. When you hear from the Lord, you can turn that key with confidence. When you hear from God, you can turn that key and decree and declare that the door, come on, will open. Or you can decree and declare that this door is shut. Never again will you come through this door. Hey, never again will you come through this door. This door is shut. Oh, glory to God. It's a powerful, prophetic act that breaks down barriers. Get out of all this little silly stuff. I behind the devil, the blood of Jesus. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, hey, come out of this silly stuff. Get some power behind it. Oh, oh discern the will of God. Oh, find out his plan. 
Know what God is saying. Know that you're waiting for see, due season. That's what set time is. Know that you're waiting on God's time. I'm not going to move in myself. Oh, it hurts. Just as fierce as a counterattack. That's just how fierce it hurts on the inside. Oh, glory to God. But I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on his set time. Because when I get ready to move in God, only his plan and his will that he have orchestrated. Because all while I was waiting and in pain, he was moving behind the scenes. He was fixing it so never again. Never again would this happen. No, never again will you do this. Never again. <laughs> Woo. This is what God wants us to do. God is about to do some great and some mighty things. God is rising to the hour to perfect all that concerns us and his will being done in our lives. God is ready to do that. Oh, and God is giving us a word for this season. Every time I get up the next few times, whenever he releases me, I'm going to be on this. I'm going to be on this. Because you're doing all this little silly stuff. This silly stuff ain't going to work. It is a set time. I'm telling you, for this church... And it has nothing to do with these four walls. It might be here, it might be somewhere else, but it's this church. It's the set time. And I prophesy that it is your individual set time as well. They're working together. And all this you're going through, while God has been tearing down, he's sovereign, he's over it all. He told a prophet, he said, I'm going to use you. Right. to declare and decree. Yeah. The prophet Jeremiah, he had done it for so long till he started crying. Yeah. They called him the weeping prophet because yeah. he said, God, I keep saying what you're saying and all it does is continue to bring me pain. Yeah. He said, I'm just not going to say it no more. The Bible said, that God, the anointing stirred soul on the inside. When you get before God and you in prayer, let me tell you, you can't stop him. Glory to God. Oh, Jeremiah said he wasn't going to say nothing. He said, oh, my God. And it was just like his tongue had clapped to the top of his mouth because he wasn't going to say nothing. Oh, but he was trying to hold it. And he said, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't keep this to myself. I got to say what God said. I don't care what the fierce attack is. I don't care how fierce the attack. I'm going to say what God tells me to say. Woo, glory to God. It's just like fire shut up in my bones. Oh, glory to God. So it don't matter. You may be in pain. You may be going through something. But if you will dare to begin to get in God's presence and humble yourself, let him expose you. Humble yourself before God. Seek his face. Begin to pray. Then you're going to hear from him. Oh, my God. God will speak. And when he speaks, oh, my God, it'll be phenomenal. When he speaks, he's going to bring down every barrier that the enemy tried to put around you. And you're going to see, my God, oh, look what the Lord has done. He has done great things. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Whereof I am truly glad. 